Every year, more than 1,250 Canadians die as a result of drunk driving. In 2010, Conservatives proposed changes to the Criminal Code to allow for random roadside breathalyzer tests. Random breath testing has been studied by everyone, from provincial governments to legal scholars to members of Parliament. Evidence from countries like Australia, New Zealand and Ireland shows that random breath testing will not only save provincial governments money, but it would save at least 200 lives a year. Why has this government failed to act on its own proposal to prevent hundreds of deaths from drunk driving? Hmm. Tom Mulcair, the most ambitious man in Ottawa, who frankly is uh, using the NDP as a vehicle for his own ambition. Sorry, but I believe that to be the case. I think actually he's probably a Liberal rather than a New Democrat, and he's chosen his party because it might be an easier way to, well, try and achieve the, the ultimate position in Ottawa, which I'm told is Prime Minister. What he said was not true, and uh, there's also a, a moral imperative here. Look, you could, oh, I don't know, uh, stop people coming out of certain areas in Toronto or Winnipeg or other cities. Just stop them at random and search the car. And there's a good chance you'd find illegal drugs and guns and you'd make society safer. Would the courts uphold that? Of course they wouldn't. Peter Jaworski joins us from Washington, di director with the Institute for Liberal Studies. Welcome to you, sir. Thank you, Michael. Thanks for having me on. Now, wh why do you care about what's happening in Canada? Well, I am Canadian, Michael. Uh, I'm just here teaching, uh, teaching business ethics at Georgetown University, but I'm trying very hard to go back to Canada as soon as I can. Well, I don't know. We've, we've alerted the border guards. and It may not happen. But <laughs> So I just want to establish that you do understand. You're not just an American talking head. You know what goes on here. Now, the, the right program has just started, and I, I, maybe it's a, a, a personal, and I, and I should try and get over it, but I resent the fact that when I'm just going about my business, I should be stopped by a police officer for no reason at all, with probably 30 or 40 kids standing behind him. And then he gives me a certificate for $2 off a store somewhere after telling me I'm a good boy and I can go on. The Supreme Court, though, said that the right program, in fact, although illegal, was allowed in this case. Is that true? Uh, yeah, so in 1985, the case of R.V. Deadman, sometimes referred to as Deadman v. The Queen, there was a narrow uh, majority opinion, four to three. They ruled that it was constitutional. But it's important to note that, for one, um, the finding of constitutionality was uh, under Section 1. So mm. it does violate Section 8 and Section 9 of the Charter, but it's saved under Section 1. And the Chief Justice was one of the dissenting opinions. I don't know how, the, uh, how a more contemporary court case would turn out, but it was saved, except, uh, you know, it was a narrow victory. Um, and it was a four to three decision. Mm. And they did find that there was a prima facie violation of our Section 8 and Section 9 rights against unreasonable search and seizure and against arbitrary detention and imprisonment. Yeah. Now, every sane person would agree that driving drunk is a bad idea and people who are caught doing such a thing should be punished. There are all sorts of crimes that go largely unpunished in this country. Some are, uh, uh, possess a certain political aspect to them, and so there's more time given to them. I think MAD, the, the anti-drunk driving campaign has become prohibitionist now. It's, it's actually about trying to remove alcohol from society. But Mulcair, who, who represents a party that at one point stood for freedom, wants more random testing so anyone can just be stopped for any reason. I thought we'd moved on from that. I mean, stop someone because, what, they're, they're too black or they're too young or they're too gay. I thought we'd moved beyond that sort of nonsense. Uh, you know, Michael, I share your cynicism and I share your surprise, too. I don't know why Thomas Mulcair of the NDP would be such a big fan of a violation of our civil liberties like this. I would have hoped to see somebody like Mulcair uh, push for greater civil liberties in Canada. Um, and so the political circumstances, I mean, they're kind of topsy-turvy. And I agree with you that I did think that we moved on too, although I should point out that there is a kind of history over the last little while of increasing the number of random stops and searches. So for example, we've become accustomed, I think, to the TSA in the United States and to some pretty uh, over-the-top procedures at our airports. Yep. Uh, and this sort of thing is expanding. And I think this is just another step in the direction of allowing police officers to have a lot more power to stop, as you said, just anybody randomly in Winnipeg and just to sort of look inside their book bags. I mean, these sorts of things, it's expanding and I'm concerned. And I think we all should be concerned about uh, the kind of um, the kind of direction that we're headed in in this case. Yeah, no, it's a very good point because the, the airport, complete and utter waste of time. There are all sorts of people who, 
who are stopped. I mean, a couple of times, I haven't been treated badly, but the idea of, of someone who has no idea about security asking you to go through a machine and lift your hands up in a certain way, it, it's a total, it's, it's pure theatre to satisfy the fanatics. It doesn't really change anything at all. There will be people now who will say, well, you, I, I have a friend who died because there was a drunk driver. Yes, we're against drunk driving, but this is not the way to stop it. And, and if the police perhaps had a presence outside certain notorious pubs and bars, you can guarantee you'd stop people getting into their cars when they were drunk. I don't think it's about that. I think it's about raising money and having a presence and, and appearing to look as though you're really involved and you really care. It is a part of security theater as you, you sort of put your finger on it. Um, I do think that, I mean, look, uh, Thomas Mulcair does cite New Zealand and Australia. And true enough, th those programs have been effective. The difference between the programs in New Zealand and Australia and the one in Canada at the moment is not just the use of a breathalyzer. Uh, on top of that, they have to stop fully a third of the people in a particular jurisdiction yeah. in order for the program to be effective. Now, that's, that's an incredible infringement. A third, how many of those are impaired drivers? Exactly. And how many of those are people like you and I going on about our business who don't want to stop and have a conversation with a police officer, yeah. regardless of how polite and nice the police officer is to me? Oh, I don't want to yeah. stop. Exactly. I'm guessing you don't either. No, or, or I've got business to attend and, uh, to. I've got things to do. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's, great stuff. Right. We, we shouldn't probably... be treated like a criminal just because I uh, well, drive I on the road. I agree. We, look, we probably disagree on all sorts of issues, and on this one, I think there's a consensus, and I appreciate that. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it.